I kept going back and forth. I was like, oh, we're not going to get it. <laughs> well, the, homie, like, when I saw I was like, man, that's a lot of money. Oh, yeah. You know? I, I was, was like, uh, but I was like, yo, you, like, go get your money, you know? <laughs> Have you been a groomsman at a wedding? Yeah. Being a groomsman is fucking awesome. Like, mm -hmm. we're just chilling. We're, like, hanging out. We're eating food. People bring us food. And then, like, 30 minutes before the wedding, we're, like, we'll get dressed, you know? <laughs> yeah. But, like, the morning of, we might, like, go, like, play basketball or, like, we're playing video games. We're just, like, Taking chilling really slow, yeah. all day. And, like, women, it's, like, they start at 3 a.m. Mm -hmm. to, like, get their hair done everything and they're like stressed because like you know one woman ate too many scones and the dress isn't fitting right and then they're like oh my gosh what do we, you know yeah and the guys are just like straight chilling you know uh -huh. well i think like that's that's one of the that's one of the best ways to just like I, I think it's also like and this maybe it's just like me and my wife but like how we process the world i'm just like I'm pretty like even keel. <laughs> I rarely show like, even if exciting things happen, I'm like, cool. Mm -hmm. But it's just like my wife, it's just like up, down, up, down. Mm. And it's just, it's just how I like experience the world. Yeah. my It's easy to get my girlfriend really fired up because she gets there like naturally. Yeah. yeah. And it's, I'm, I'm like, but I'm very even keeled. Even when I'm upset, I'm like, God, it's fine. Yeah. It's okay. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just like, yeah, it's it, normally I, I feel stress for maybe like five minutes mm -hmm. you know so like like i said i we have a couple rentals and i'm like this guy's gonna leave and i'm like oh man if he leaves what i'm like i gotta find somebody else have all this happened this happened this happened and then like for five minutes i'm like what am i gonna do and then after those five minutes i'm like i'm hungry you know and i just <laughs> right. like go on to something else but yeah how's here. it feel being a landlord um it, honestly it's it's there's pros and cons. Like most of the time it like, I don't think about it mm -hmm. as much. It's a great, like it's fairly passive. Um, obviously with the government, those fucks in the government. Oh my gosh. Pissing me off. Um, it's, there's some challenges for sure. But like, I think I, I struggled with it particularly after this year because there was such a housing shortage mm -hmm. and like, people couldn't buy homes, you know, and I'm just like, oh, I got three, you know, <laughs> so, um, so you, you really struggled with it. I really <laughs> struggled. No, I, it was like, it was hard because I'm just like, am I stealing from like other people, you know? Yeah. But I think the reality is, is like, we live in Indianapolis. It's a very transient city. Most, a lot of people don't even want to buy homes. They just want like a place over their heads. So like, yeah. And I think with my experience and other people, they've had bad experiences with landlords. So, like, when people bitch about, like, whatever it is, like, landlords or just, like, capitalism or whatever, it's just, like, okay, if you want to change it, like, you have to get directly involved. Hmm. So, it's, like, I, we, like, me and my wife, we try really hard to be, like, good landlords. And just, like, if they text us, we address it immediately. We try to fix it or whatever. So... Um, so it, yeah, it has its up and down, ups and downs, but I think, yeah, I just, I struggled with it in the beginning. So I'm like, dude, I have so many properties, but I'm like, now I'm like, oh, like, I think I'm actually doing a good mm -hmm. providing a service for other people, but not be, try not to be a dick about it. Yeah. I just, I don't even really want to own one house. So yeah. I can't imagine. Owning Why do you want to own a house? I just, I'm terrible at handiwork. It's you just don't so have much. to pay someone. Yeah, yeah, but then that's more money. I don't know. Everyone, like, everyone I talk to, they're like, oh, you bought a house. It's great. It's such a great investment. And then, like, Dude. a month later, they're like, oh, my phone's like, HVAC system. And, oh, yeah. this is, God, I'm out um, of money. And you're like, that sounds horrible. Are you into, like, investing at all? I should be, no. You 100% should be. But, <laughs> what, do you have, like, a I 401k people. or something? Fuck off, man. Uh -huh. something like, uh, oh, what's that guy's name? Never mind. I don't remember so much. Yeah, but, it's just, like, I, I, I know. Like, I know everyone's going to tell me the same thing. I've heard it. But I just, yeah. like... It's it's just one of those things. that's like, I'm like, because you're what you're. I don't 30, think I'm 30? in the right. Are you thirty? No, almost. almost? Um, Hanging on. 
two days ago was my 29th and a half birthday. Okay. So you're still mature. Um, yeah. Doing the halves. But um, no, I, investing, it's like, it's one of those things that the earlier this you start, the better it is in mm -hmm. the long term. And I think too, just like coming off of like getting into my dad's finances and stuff. And he's like 68. It's just like, and like seeing what he has. And I'm like, Oh, like you're doing okay, but you could be doing like much better mm -hmm. and just like having more security. Cause like when you're like right now, it's just like, Oh, we can go get money. We can go figure it out. But went 30 years. Yeah. We'll be like, what do you like? What are you gonna do if we didn't take a few extra steps to like, you know, yeah, invest in something? But also too, because I remember when I bought this house, I was like nervous because I'm just like, yo, this like, yeah, I have the same like, what if something breaks? What if this happens? And then somebody was just like, all right, how long have you been renting? I'm like, well, oh, five yeah, the classic, years. Classic example. They're like, where's yeah. that money gone? I'm like, oh, you're right. Uh -huh. So I, don't I, know. I definitely I don't think by any means I'm in the right. On this, like, I know I'm on the losing damn, side. Damn Rabble and their, yeah, their damn lids. Listen, I love Rabble Coffee, but yeah, the lids do. They're, they're lit. Listen, Mitch, you gotta <laughs> fix the lids. I don't know what's going on, but every time I take a drink, it like spills. I love that they were very nice to me like 20 minutes ago. I'm like, yeah, I'm just gonna go hang out with a friend. Then I come over, like, listen, <laughs> yeah, Rabble, listen, get your shit together. It's a critique. It's a valid critique. This episode is brought to you by Rabble, Rabble Coffee. Rabble Coffee. Oh, that would be the day when this has a sponsor. I just feel like I, and again, like I don't think I'm right. I'm on the losing side of this game and this culture, but I just hate like the money game. It's like such like, a, I'm like, I don't know. It's like immature to say that, but it's just like, it's just exhausting. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it is. And, it, and I'm constantly in, in the battle of like, I don't like the fact that I don't like I, I like money, but I also don't like money. And yeah. like I want to make a lot of money, but I also don't want to be like ruled by money. I'm the same way. Yeah, I mean I like. And money. it's like, and it's just this hard. It's just it's just, it's a hard thing. But I think I I mean 2020, we had so much time on our hands, and I just started reading a bunch about money. I'm just like, oh, and it's like, like I'm 30 or 31. Fuck. Um, but you know, I always thought having like a house or having multiple houses that was for rich people mm -hmm. but it's like it's not at right. all yeah. like i'm not i'm not super wealthy or anything but it's i don't know i like it it's fun and we bought uh, the house we bought was like a brand new build so those are like kind of, and it was designed to be like a low maintenance so i don't think i've really like i might have fixed like a toilet issue okay see i'm into that idea of low maintenance yeah, house that, dude. or get like um get like a condo or something mm -hmm. you get like a cool condo in a cool area just because like then they have maintenance people who could probably help you but they'll like maintain certain things externally but they, if something happens on the inside you have to pay for it but at least you like they have some people yeah you know yeah i definitely want to try to stay in this neighborhood if i can though because like can can rabble oh yeah dude yeah for sure i haven't been to amelia's yet yeah um, that's cool I should, what's and what's next to Amelia's? Um, I haven't been, but there's this place called Stomping Ground, which is a shop, and I haven't been, so I don't want to say what they have because I don't want to be wrong. Um, and then I and this may be open. I don't know the name of it, but I know a um like a skate shop is supposed to open in the area yeah. too. Yeah, that yeah yeah. yeah. That is was, there gonna be a skate park? I don't I don't know. Dude, I I was such a poser. Like I would go to the skate. Park I bought a skateboard last year. And like, in oh, you did? I, yeah, I didn't. I have enough. one somewhere, but um, I've like skated a few times. But then somebody, one of my friends, told me that like skating is like hard for fat people, <laughs> and I think that made me like really insecure. And I was like, oh fuck, I can't do this. Uh -huh. But um, yeah, I was like a I was the poser kid who was just like uh, skate parks. You know, just like hang out and wouldn't do anything in mm -hmm. a skate park but um have you has any of your stuff been you've done stuff at the can can right um i haven't really premiered anything there yet um i shot they had a promo that still plays in some of their theaters that um was like a little welcome back to the movies thing when they opened oh, i, yeah, I yeah. directed that and i shot a scene two scenes there for my uh, film that i shot in september 
So I've I've been in there and shot stuff, but I haven't like premiered anything yeah. there. Yeah. No, we went for the first we saw French Dispatch. Um, which I didn't really like. I didn't either. I, I felt bad, like, because it's, it's Wes Anderson, like, uh-huh. but it was just, it was too, like, I don't know. I it was like, too, like, bi- every, it was too bifurcated, you know? Yeah, I kind of wanted, like, I feel like right now a lot of people are, like, some people, like, on Twitter, you know, film Twitter, are, like, dragging it, but more of it's just because it's, like, they're, like, oh, he's just kind of, like, doing his Wes Anderson style, which I think it's dumb to drag somebody for having a style. So that's not my beef with it, but it's more of like, I wish there was just some emotional connection that I had. Yeah. Cause I like it in theory. Like when I talk about it out loud, mm-hmm. I'm like, Oh, I like a film that does that. But I, I kind of wanted more connective tissue with like the actual reporters, like yeah. Bill Murray, like running like the paper. Yeah. Um, Cause when it ended, you're like, I was like, okay. Yeah. It was very like one dimensional. There wasn't, there wasn't depth. There wasn't really character development. Which is okay to just to be, like, fun. But sure. I felt like something was still yep. missing. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. No, but, I mean, it's still, like, Wes Anderson. Like, Wes Anderson does his style. I don't even know. I don't even know how. Like, it. His the colors just pop, like, mm-hmm. way more. I don't even. I don't know what he's doing. Um, but, yeah, I, I almost fell asleep, like, in the film. And I I felt bad yeah. to fall asleep. But I um, you gotta write. You gotta write a good film. I and he didn't. I ate uh, wings at the Can Can before we saw the movie, and they have um, habanero. It's mm-hmm. like habanero barbecue, and I've had them before, and they aren't that spicy. But these ones, I was warned they're very spicy <coughs> tonight, and the guy wasn't lying, and I was like crying when I was eating them. But anyway, yeah. so like ha- like halfway through the movie. And I also have IBS, so like I just had to take oh, like dude, I had to like leave and take a shit. The poops. But then I also made the mistake of not washing like my hands like before and getting all like the habanero spices off. So some of my privates that were touched in the process were like Ooh, burning throughout the daddy. movie. So that was kind of my review of French Dispatch. Daddy it was pain. Yeah. Um, or, I feel like I just we just gave another accidentally bad review of a place. No, it's like Can Can's great. It's like, yeah, they, and also they made it's my like burn. people like. You can critique, we can, cri- I think we're like, I don't know, we can critique things. Like, it's, I'm not saying like, like, Rabble's great. I go there all the time and I will continue to go all the time. But fix the damn list, you know, <laughs> like, can can. I don't know, can can's great. Yeah, no. You, d- you just it was rubbed, more, it was you more just, me. that was you. You ate habanero wings and touched your sack. Yeah, yeah like, that's have done not that. a that's good, that's not a good. No, can can was dope. I, um, I love that place. Yeah, I don't know. Are they gonna do? Are they gonna show Spider Man? You think? No. Have you seen what's happening with Spider Man? Uh, what do you mean? Like all the tickets have sold out. I, I and then there's people who are like scout like eBay and yeah. they're for like hundreds of dollars. I don't to know go why. Like see. why? I guess people. I mean, I. It's nostalgia, but because, it's like it's it's the hype of Avengers, but it's also the nostalgia of like I loved Sam Raimi's Spider Man. Yeah, then just go watch it. Like they're just ripping it off, and they're also just ripping. I know, off but he's gonna be in it, dude. Yeah, but then they made Doc Ock all like they all look like just CGI. It just looks like why? Oh I guess it just feels like a way to introduce. You the sound kids like a director, Raimi. dude. Just like, eh. oh, you enjoy something? Let me yeah, shit. Yeah, you off. shouldn't like that. No, it's just ex- it's exciting. I mean, it's like I believe you to to have all different like, but I think it's too. It's just like it, to have like. Um, I'm trying to think when they in a lot of Marvel movies when in the Hulk, the first Hulk, like Luke Ferrigno was in it. Like it's like it's a cool callback. It's a cool like tip of the hat. Like, hey, we see. You. But yeah, now that's a tip of the hat. Yeah. But now they're going to be they're all wearing the hat. Yeah. You know? And they'll all be. I just think it's something fun that ha- I mean, it's kind of been done. Be- well, it hasn't been done before. Which aspects exactly of like all three characters who've played that character. No, but they're just stealing from Into the Spider-Verse, which I guess they're allowed to do because it's Sony, and they've made that, but... Are they, though? Because couldn't you just say they're well, just the whole thing they're stealing from the multiverse? Doctor from Strange Doctor is, like, Strange. opening up timeline. Yeah, but come on. I mean, Into the Spider-Verse came out a couple years ago, and now they're like, ooh, yeah, that's for us, too. <laughs> you, I would guess, just to guess, that... Marvel is years now. Flash, the Flash for DC is also doing it. I don't know. I don't think it's out. It's not out yet. But like, um, oh, they're doing. Michael like Keaton a... is in there as like Batman, because I think it's like something oh, where. Okay, see, but now, but that, but to me, that's like 
clear that you're ripping off of right but it's like two spider-mans doing a similar thing feels cheaper to me i don't know what's do you not do like marvel movies or no not really not there anymore. it is that's where Are the you problem is but there's, there's just so many and they're all just yeah they're all just ads for like the next yeah. thing yeah they're it's, not really but, like but it's just like on. you have to like, i feel like when you watch film and you can tell me because you went to film school so you know we're allowed to have different opinions but today. like there are certain films that are just for entertainment i mean you could for argue sure. all but then there's other that are like art pieces yeah like, I like every the marvel Spider-Man. film is entertainment and i think i mean there is i think there is something there is a art well there is something really cool that marvel's done that they've from you know over the last what 20 years or almost 20 years, 15? Iron Man was the one that really started off like this iteration, it was like 2015, and that came out in 20, or, uh, 2008. Okay. So, I mean, they're coming up, uh, they're almost, what, 12 years. But to, like, have this whole plan. Yeah, it's impressive. It's, like, it's pretty it's pretty amazing. But they're just entertainment, you know? Like, For sure. Most movies today are entertainment. But they can. I think they can still be bad. I don't think, like, I'm not against entertainment. I like entertaining Yeah, movies. don't you like the Fast and Furious movies? Oh, yeah. But yeah. see, like, those at least, like... Well, there is a spinoff, which I was terrible, but like, with, I f- oh, Hobbs and Shaw. Yeah, I love Hobbs. But with and like Shaw. Fast and but with like Fast and Furious, like, yeah, you kind of need to see. There's nine of them now. Like, yeah, if you haven't seen the other ones, you might be and a little lost. But there's no like, it's not like you have to watch Fast and Furious, and then you also have to go watch these four other movies and this TV show yeah. and this to really understand. Well, yeah, and I think that's gonna be first of all, the first Fast and the Furious was horrible. I watched it recently, and it's just like. Like even the ending, the whole oh they drive over the train tracks. It's so well, good. yeah, but that part. But I'm just saying the whole reason they started like doing that was because his was it his brother got shot, right? They started doing what? Which part? Um, before like the last car chase scene with Paul Walker and Vin Diesel, uh-huh. wasn't like Vin Diesel's his like brother got shot or something, right? Um, I I can't remember because they bring his. <coughs> But all I'm saying is that I'm pretty sure it's something oh, no, somebody, like that. Somebody in the and crew he, dies. It's and he's all of uh, his whole thing is family. Yeah. That fucker just left. Like the thing that spurred him to like drive, he just left him. Mm-hmm. And his whole thing's about family. But he doesn't. He doesn't. I can't see. I kind of remember, but don't remember. <laughs> Because there's, this there's is nine selective of them. memory. There's yeah, that's nine true. of them. I'm that's trying true. to filter through. Um, no, but oh, well, we were talking about something. Marvel. No, I, 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 I knew I should. have. Spicy wings touching your sack. No, I, I shouldn't this have. This is such a culture conversation. I shouldn't have went on this tangent, but I did anyway. But. Um, oh, just entertainment, like what? In oh yeah, entertaining. Th- yeah, I, I was saying something. That yeah, we about you were too. Meh, doesn't matter. Yeah, I like movies can completely be entertaining. I just think Marvel movies can be like they could be better if they weren't trying to be like also commercials and i think i think the bad thing is now everything has to be connected mm-hmm. and i think there's nothing wrong with like being like a standalone thing and i like yeah. a good sequel like, i I'm think not, i'm just yeah i'm i think yeah i love marvel I'll i just, just hate that also they've won the like i don't want to say cultural wars not like oh, i don't want to sound right wing but like they've won they like they are like I'm dominating sorry. in the culture but they still act like they're like the losers like yeah. online they're well it's I, I think marvel's gonna have a problem they're gonna have a challenge. I want to say a problem is because COVID happened, killed a lot of the momentum that they were that they had right off. Because Endgame was like, I loved Endgame. It was great. Mm-hmm. They had a ton of momentum. Then the world shut down, and then they're trying to build up that momentum again. But now they're getting into TV shows, so they're like they're splitting up their audience, so only a select amount of people can see Disney Plus, and so like you have to kind of like follow both the movie world and the limited series because it's all starting to connect. So I think they might have. I don't think it's a problem. I think they're doing just fine. You think so? Yeah. Because I well I just know like I don't know, like I I know of a few people who haven't like my wife she doesn't watch the shows but she'll go to the movie she's like I don't understand what's happening I'm just like oh it's because yeah you didn't watch whatever yeah but she's still I'm going just to bitter because they didn't l- invite me to being Shang Chi. Uh-huh. Cause I'm not well, Asian enough. They said I wasn't Asian enough. Yeah. How shitty. When did they say that? Uh, what? Whenever? What? It was like five months ago. When that we were 
message in and we should film an audition tape for you. I would do it. I will do let's do an audition tape and I will be I could be Shang Chi's like loser brother. Uh-huh. You know. But I've been critical of China, so who knows? <laughs> we might not they might not like me. You'd but. have to issue an apology video. Yeah. But um so okay, we were talking about Can Can. Well, no, cuz we want I want to talk about Paco cuz you said it was like you were like a celebrity. Uh, well, you were like famous. I don't want to blow it up. I felt I'll fucking blow it up. You were famous, dude. No, it's like that's not what happened. They, it, you were standing next to Elijah Wood, mm. and people were like, "Zach, Elijah, excuse me." Yeah, that's what happened. No, that didn't happen. Um, I I was in Austin end of October um, for a short film that I did, and it just played very well, and it was cool. And a few times afterwards, what, I got it, recognized. what does it mean to play very well? Um, so it's kind of like a dark comedy i say dark just because like it gets a little violent but um it just like got a lot of laughs and a lot of i got the it got the right reactions at the right time that i was hoping for um and it was cool to see it with an audience because i hadn't had a chance to do that so to travel by yourself be with a bunch of strangers and have it play well was really really nice mm -hmm. and then meeting people afterwards was cool and then like i was by no means a celebrity but because i also acted in it a few people uh, throughout the rest of the weekend that I was there, recognized me and came up and said hi, which is cool. But it was like three people. I yeah. don't want to act like it was <clears throat> more than three that. people's more than. But we well we lost the audience where we didn't get that. So you know, but it's, that's were exact, you, that's were exact you nominated Cooper story. for it. Oh, well, everybody's nominated. For, like oh. it's just gotta get the most votes. Um, but yeah, it was a cool experience. I mean, I met some people that I've stayed in touch with afterwards. Yeah, yeah. It's just film is so interesting. Like, cause like music. I can create it by myself mm -hmm. and release it digitally, and it's short. Mm -hmm. It's like three, four minutes. But film, it's like you need a crew. I mean, you could technically do it yourself, yeah. like Bo Burnham. Uh -huh. um, or, but it's, pr I don't know, it's probably not fun. Yeah, I feel like you know? some people are good at being like a one-man band, and I'm not, but I feel like even if I was... <laughs> It's more fun to collaborate with people. Sure. Yeah. But yeah, you need like, and I usually have small crews, but even a small crew is like three to four people. Yeah. Yeah. So like to get, to get a film made. So I, I guess like when you're, cause you basically in order to make it in the film world, which I'm still figuring out, which you're still be, figuring to be out, clear. but I mean, I, like for me, it's just like, I could, a song, I could just release a song on the internet could pop off. Mm hmm. And a bunch of people could start following me, and then I could bring in revenue from Spotify, from a bunch of different sources. But, like, in order to make a film, make a career in film, you can't really do that. I mean, uh, you technically could, like, yeah. drop a film on YouTube, mm -hmm. and then millions and millions of people watch it. Yeah. But you can't churn out a film like you can. I could, like... If I wanted to, I could put out a, a song a day. Mm -hmm. They won't be good, but I could do that. Yeah. You couldn't really. I mean, maybe you could do a short film. I mean, I guess Casey Neistat did it, but you know, but yeah. I think, but that's like different. That's vlog, like that's vlogging. vlogging. You're not yeah. vlogging. You're not trying to like tell a different a different story every day. So like, how do you make it in the film world? I'll let you know when I find out. But there's like, I mean, there's a bunch how are of different you thinking about making it. I don't. I think my strategy. We'll see if it works out in like thirty years. Maybe we should do a follow up in like thirty years. Yeah, yeah. With my this, with sure my financial with my financial yeah. hardships yeah, yeah. and my uh, we'll obscurity. do it in your house. Yeah, my multiple houses. Yeah, yeah. Um, there. I mean, there's. I mean, it's. I feel like there's just so many weird avenues, and you don't know what could like pop off. I think like. Um. One guy that I really look up to as a filmmaker in his like career arc um, is Richard Linklater, um, who's like a Texas filmmaker who did originally from Texas, but he did like Slacker, Days and Confused, the Before trilogy, School of Rock. What trilogy? Uh, uh, before so um, Before Sunrise, Before Sunset, Before Midnight, <coughs> um, okay. which are some of my favorite films. Uh, Boyhood, all this stuff. Anyway, he talks about um, how he kind of spent his twenties making short films, watching films, studying films, um, and then made a couple like little features. And uh, but he's, I've heard him talk a lot about how like 
he just didn't really have like a he didn't think about the business side of things because he says that will that will come and some people are more business savvy and that just might be how their brains work but i think i'm more on the other side of like trying not to to think about it and just trying to like create good work Mm -hmm. um and try to be satisfied with that so with that so it's like trying to get into festivals um but I also don't like the idea. Of, like, I think some people make a film and put everything into like a short film or something like that, or even just like a feature, and they try to like ride that wave as long as possible. I feel like that's just not how my brain works. Like, I make something and then take it as far as it can maybe go, and then make something else. Like, I don't, I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket. So I think for me, it's it's about continuously creating. Yeah. Um, and trying to be like, it's hard. Like I'm saying this, like I figured it out, but it's like trying to be content, like realizing like there is also reality where, you know, you're just like an, an artist, meaning you're working a day job to support yourself, but you're creating these things as uh, <coughs> self-expression. Right. Yeah. So it's like, maybe this, maybe this is like what it'll always be and trying to be okay with that. Right now, I feel like I'm young enough where I can still keep pushing, but yeah. like understanding that, like, eh, maybe so like, this. Be, so like, doing the film film festival route, like, best case scenario, I mean, is what you're looking for. I mean, obviously, you're gonna make some connections, but like, you do Paco, and then somebody who's got some money, who's either a producer or a director, is just like, hey, I really liked your work. I'd love to like talk. Yeah, I mean, I think that's like the that's everyone's dream is like go meet. Like, Has a that producer. happened? It's happened, not to me. Yeah. Uh, but I feel like not to most people. I feel like that's like, I don't know. I, and you probably learned this with music, but I feel like everyone's trying to do their own thing. Like, mm-hmm. you know, like you meet people and if they have connections, it's like they're, they're not trying to keep it to themselves, but like they're, <coughs> they're trying to get their own thing started. Yeah. So it's like, I feel like you, I don't know. I don't, I don't really have that dream anymore of going anywhere, which I, I'm going in, going to like a festival and then having someone be like, Oh, that was really great. Let's talk and let me give you money. Because um, yeah. then I think if you do that, then like every festival is just going to be a disappointment. Sure. Because even if someone does that, doesn't mean it's going to go anywhere. I mean, that's part of the business too. Is you read it all the time. Like people talk about, like, oh, try to make this film for three years. It went through this producer, this producer, blah blah blah. So it's like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Just that wasn't. I don't really know where I'm going with that. But it's yeah. more of just like I think trying to like keep your dreams level and trying to make it more about making stuff. But I I do feel like I, I'm trying to get better at like the distribution side which is just like getting into festivals and um figuring out what i want to do with it after it's made because i feel like a lot of filmmakers you hear it's like we like making it and then releasing it's like the worst part yeah because it takes so much work and that's the like it's it's interesting like releasing it takes more work yeah it's rewarding to like get people to like see your work and interact with it if they do but um but yeah putting out there it's like such a drag yeah yeah because it's like so like when I, I I have some songs done finally, um, but I have like a probably a two month marketing plan. So it's like the first month is just like ramp up, and then the second month is just like keep like I get it's keep and like putting it out and like just so much e- so many emails so much content and you're just constantly putting it out mm-hmm. and it's and it's. It's more work. I think it's more work because the, the, for me, the enjoyment is in the process. Yeah. And I don't view the marketing as the process. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to rewire my brain. But it is, unfortunately. To think yeah. That it's the process, but it is. Because it's, for me, the process is creating the work. Mm-hmm. Um, and I really need to incorporate exposing the work as a part of the process. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's, yeah, it's tough because, yeah, I mean, just what you said, it's a lot of work and you don't always know, like, the reward. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you could pay a bunch of money to submit to a bunch of festivals. Mm-hmm. And then, like, so with film, it's like you look at festivals you want to submit to, you submit to those, and then sometimes they may be close together where you're going to a bunch in succession or you're getting rejected from a bunch of succession. And then, so it's like, you don't ever like, uh, I could submit to a festival. That's like, actually won't be until six months from now. And I won't find out if I'm in it till like five months from now, you know? So like, uh, you just don't know what's going to like pan out. Um, so I don't, I've always like struggling to figure out like how long do you keep pushing something? Cause it's like, I just want to go make something else. Like, and I think that's why I am 
so I think what's different about like me now, St. Alban now, as opposed to in the past, um, is I actually have a plan. Yeah. And the more like, cause I've, I've been in like the corporate business world for the last like three years or so. And before that was just a nonprofit stuff. But now like I'm learning that any business cause, and I know artists, we don't like to think about it as a business, but it like, <clears throat> Even like in the the, sm- the smallest way, think of it like a business. But any business, anyone who's successful, most of them have a plan. Mm-hmm. And so I'm trying to like, which will help me figure out when I'm done to move on to the next thing. It's just it's like, this is the plan, execute the plan. And then once that's done, I can go work on the next thing. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, I feel like I'm, I'm in the middle of, of trying to like form a plan. So like mm-hmm. I, I like I agree with you. Like I think I'm at the part where I'm like, okay, I need to. Even though I don't like the releasing side of it, I need to be more savvy about it. I need to like figure yeah. it out. Because the other thing too is that you know I just shot a film in September, which is more of a feature length film, and it's like I don't want to just have to sit on that for a few years. Like I kind of want to like get it done, and then hopefully be able to show that to some people, which would make me get another one. <laughs> I don't know, and if yeah. not, still do it on my own. So it's like I trying to figure out like a plan and then how you just keep momentum. How, like what's, what's your, I don't want to say what's your process, but how do, do ideas just come to you? I don't know where. Cause I mean, that's how like songs most of the time, a word, a phrase or a melody just pops in my head. I don't know where. Yeah. Which is so weird. It's, it's so weird. It's like, people are like, man, you wrote this song. And like some of it's like, I didn't like, I can't, you I, I can't take credit for yeah. s- a lot. You can't really take credit for some stuff because it's just like it just happened. I uh-huh. was on the toilet, I farted like, and it, the frequency triggered something in my brain, and uh, and then I wrote this banger. Yeah, you know. No, it. I mean, it's weird. I feel like it's different for every for every film to a degree, but it is also some of that where you're like, I don't know if I can really take credit for it. And sometimes, like, yeah, sometimes ideas just come to me, but usually those don't stick or they kind of suck or they're like for me i get stuck and this would work for some people but i get stuck just like thinking of clever ideas but they're ultimately kind of empty so then you like think you like get excited Mm -hmm. and you're like "Ah, okay so that xyz just happens like who cares like you're just kind of patting yourself on the back um but then sometimes those ideas you get another idea like two years later and you're like marry the two ideas like oh now that's a complete idea that i can get behind yeah um so I think for me, I've this isn't a hard and fast rule, but I've learned that like, I feel like it takes me to like go through like three different ideas before I find my next one. Like sure. usually, there's always one that I think of next, and I'm like, oh, this is great, this is so brilliant, blah blah. blah. <laughs> this uh, is the one. And I just like write, <laughs> I just like go down a rabbit hole, write in circles. Yeah. I'm like, no, this sucks. And then there's usually something else, and then it's like roughly like the third idea for me is what ends up sticking in some form. Mm-hmm. But even then, usually then it's like, it goes through a bunch of rewrites where it becomes something hopefully better. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just a lot of like, I do, I haven't been doing as much lately because I trying to give this other film that I just shot more of my full attention. Um, but often for me, it's more writing in like the form of, ju- <laughs> of journaling. Yeah. Uh, but even not necessarily just about my life, but just like thinking out loud of just like, okay, I'm thinking out loud on paper. So like, okay, here's my thoughts uh what could this be where could this go um and so like it's just thinking out loud on a piece of paper and sometimes it becomes more about like here's what's going on in life and then trying to figure out some kind of metaphor for that Mm -hmm. like that's kind of where it's not out yet but the the (laughs) film that we did together in june Mm -hmm. where it's you and fred miller playing slightly Uh, fictional versions of yourself like i was feeling uh, like a year ago a little a little less i was feeling like just really down it's like walking on this cold day after my run in the morning, just feeling like everything sucked. And then kind of... After your run? Yeah, like that's I was like it, that's walking. Very, I feel like that's very odd to like feel down after a well, workout. Well, I had like gotten rejected <laughs> from this thing that I was hoping to get Paco into. And I remember walking and it was cooling down after my run. And it was still really cold. And like there was this like dead end sign that was like frozen over in my neighborhood and it just felt like how i felt yeah, like yeah, it was yeah. just cold and like yeah, dead yeah. end so i was like having a pity party that day 
um, and kind of thinking about like, I don't want to give up. But man, some people just like totally give up and it's, <laughs> I'm like so happy for them. Like, I wish I could do that sometimes. And that's kind of what that film was like about. Um, spoiler alert. But yeah. yeah. Uh, so like, that's where like, so some ideas come from real life and then some come from seems like nowhere. And sometimes you take stuff from your life, other people's life and mix it together. Mm -hmm. It just depends. Are you, because weren't you saying that you were trying to make something like a quarter or something like that? Yeah, so like something, so yeah, speaking of plans, something I came up well, with. Yeah, what is your like loose plan? My loose plan that I'm trying to keep myself motivated with um, is make something like, you know, so looking at things like a business, like I work at a um, production studio and so <coughs> this is attached to agency, so I'm used to hearing about quarters, blah, blah. So it's like, okay, I want to make something per quarter but that doesn't have to be just my thing. Like maybe it's helping produce a friend's project yeah. or being actively involved in a friend's project or be my own thing. So it's more just trying to stay busy and stay creative uh, and stay a part of the community is mm -hmm. the idea. Why do you think it's so – because I've, I've been thinking about this a lot. Like <clears throat> we were just talking about it earlier. I, I am at editing like the first podcast and I did the first and it was fun, dude. It's yeah. fucking fun. And I'm like putting the intro together. And I'm like, oh, this is great. And that was a month ago. Mm -hmm. And I haven't edited a podcast since. So like, why is it so fucking hard to like stay busy and to stay active? Because it's like, this is where my, I want my career here. Uh -huh. and I'm here. Yeah. And like, and I understand that to get there, I need to work yeah. consistently. Well, I think it's because, like, I think part of the reason why I let myself, like, one of those quarterly projects, I let it be somebody else's if that becomes the opportunity. was just because, like, I think the struggle is is when you're creating your own project. And I'll just, I mean, film, per se, because that's what I'm used to. It's, like, it's never easier. Like, it's always from the ground up every time. And yeah. so, like, you're just like, oh. And it's always on you as the one leading it. And so I think it just gets exhausting because, yeah. like, you can get on that creative high and then you realize, like, the work that actually has to go into it. Yeah. And that, once again, you have to be like, hey, so-and-so, are you free? Like, you have to start getting people excited <laughs> and then getting schedules and then something will come up. You have to reschedule and, and yeah. shooting. And, and so, like, it's all fun, but it but it can be – if if you're not in the right mood, it can start to get you down because you're like – it just feels like like 100%. pushing that rock up the hill as yeah. it rolls back down and pushing it. And I think yeah, I just um, I just need Adderall, maybe. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I think I have ADD, but you know, I feel like everyone thinks they have ADD because they're like, I'm lazy today. I must have ADD. Uh -huh. Maybe well, it's just me. I just feel like also like I think there's always a desire, <clears throat> but I don't think you can always create. You know, like sure. I think, and everybody has a different opinion and different. Um, method style whatever but it's like for me it's like i, w I only want to make something if i have something to say it doesn't have to be profound it's just like something to express even if it's silly yeah. um so i think there's i think you also have to let yourself be like ref like refill that like well of ideas and stuff and mm -hmm. just not i think it's easy to feel like a machine especially with like the internet age of seeing everybody put out stuff and like yeah. you always feel like i mean you could put out a song per day you'll probably come across somebody who puts out an album per day and you'll be like, oh, I suck. You yeah, know? I don't work hard enough. Yeah, there'll be some stupid YouTube video about like how to make an album a day and all that stuff. But it's like, I think like right now in that culture, it's you feel like a machine because you're just, you have to like be a machine because you're seeing stuff new come out every every day. But I think you yeah. have to like let yourself just make some, I, I also don't want to say like just make something when it comes to you, like you have to just sit around. I think there's practice you can do um, like for me, it's, I don't write like every day, but I try to get in, I haven't been, but I try to get in the habit when I'm writing just to like show up at my desk at the same time mm -hmm. every morning. And even if no ideas come and maybe I'll just journal or just doodle around, but it's like being present during that time. Yeah. I don't know. That didn't answer your question. I don't think. No, I, no, I was just, it's just more of a, a curiosity thing, but, um, and then, because you so you, you you've been doing you did your feature. It's done. Well, it's it's post shot. Yeah, it's at, or it's yeah, um, editing it. But you raised like fifteen thousand. Yeah, yeah. Which is like that seems unheard of, and it wasn't like a fake. You didn't do it fake. 
Did you do it fake? I don't know what that means. Well, you, I mean, oh, so oh, like putting my own money. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, thankfully, I didn't have to. Yeah, like how that just seems like a huge feat. It was. And I think alone, even at the film, sucks. Uh-huh. Like you were oh, 16 000. Yes, <laughs> I was in it. But yeah. No, um, that's incredible to raise 16,000. I've 15. Well, 15, so technically, sorry, oh, and I'm not downgrading it. Yes, it was cool. But at the end of the day, when everything was said and done, what we actually ended up getting out of that 15 was 12,600 something. Because the company's got to take their Yeah, the company, well, so like part of like, so we're using Seed and Spark and how some of that works is like people can can donate um, things, which would then count towards your goal. Gotcha. Um, like so, crypto. for example, if you're like, I want, I need 500 bucks for a camera, because um, you can list like how you're gonna use the money. And so, if, if you say like, oh, I'm, I need 500 for a camera, and someone's like, oh, hey, I have that camera, I'll just donate it, then you can like check off that 500 gotcha. bucks. But it, it looks like someone yeah, yeah, contributed yeah, yeah. 500 okay. bucks. So, but so, that's just, I mean, that's incredible. So, 14,000 s- of it was like raised, like money, yeah. and then so then uh, out of the 15,000. And then, yeah, then fees and then some people's credit cards not going through. Ooh, <laughs> uh, did you call those people? No. <laughs> I should have. Uh, you should have. With some people, I was Which like, is hard. Is a, I've had to do it before. It sucks. Yeah, some people, I was like, oh, I'm, I've, I've heard you, you're having trouble. I'm surprised you gave. Like, thank you. And then yeah, it yeah. bounced. And you're like, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, whatever. It was it was fine. I wasn't going to knock down doors. I also, what are their names? <clears throat> Beep. Yeah. Yeah, we are also in the middle of film. We like, I think the nice thing about doing it this way, though there was downsides, was like, the film is gonna get made no matter what. Um, but then like, we were gonna do it before the pandemic, and then um, pandemic hit, and then some of the people that are on crew, they they do that for a living, like freelance. And so I was like, okay, I don't want them to do it for free, uh, yeah. which they would have done before. But it was like, <laughs> well, my friends had a baby then at the time, so I was kind of like. Hey, to two of them, I was like, "Can I? If I could just pay your rent, like I can't really pay you what you're, what you would make or what you're owed, but if I could at least just pay your rent, because you're basically giving up a month of work, even though it's like sure. two weeks. But the way the timing all works out, so it's like, if I could just pay your rent, I would not feel like an asshole friend. And that was like the agreement. And then also it was just like, like feeding people, like that was part of the reason mm. of of donating money or of, of raising money. Um, and sometimes like I I feel a little like weird about it because i don't like asking people for money and i knew it was like my one chance to do it but mm-hmm. i get like your pride gets in the way because i have like a diy spirit in me for the yeah. most part and then you're like oh i like ask people for money and was it cool that i did that or should i waited but yeah. but at the end of the day it's like i got to pay people some other people that i wouldn't have been able to and feed one people of the great. best things that I, it was from someone in fundraising but like um because asking people for things or like for money specifically is really hard um but one thing that they said they're like one thing you're not thinking about is when you ask people for money like you're depriving them the opportunity to like give yeah and to be like generous uh-huh. which i was like oh yeah that's true yeah then i just started asking everybody for money and it was great yeah and i and i had help like i can't <coughs> take credit for it. and i yeah. think um I think part of the reason it was also successful was, which is what I was banking on, was that like I've never done that before, mm-hmm. and I usually make like a short film a year, and so like I feel like I've been um, very active in that way. So I felt like people would know that if I was asking now, that that meant that I must actually need the support instead mm-hmm. of just like I was just not willing to pay out of pocket. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, I mean that's. I think you were the first friend that I know of who is successfully raised the amount of money that they were wanting to raise without faking it i didn't think we would so i don't know I, I kept going back and forth i was like oh we're not gonna get it <laughs> well the, homie like when i saw i was like man that's a lot of money oh yeah you know I was, I was like but i was like yo you like go get your money you know because i've yeah I've been, I've been on the other end too where i see that i'm like oh my god yeah it yeah. was like yeah that's not gonna happen but people do you know how many people gave total? i not it's on my head i was like i have that number but mm-hmm. i don't um, I don't know the final number. I mean, at one point, I know it was like sixty something people. Um, That's awesome. I'm sure it w- ended up being more than that. Um, yeah, and like my one of my producers, um, her name is Victoria. Shout out to her because she was like, it was like me and her tackling it. Yeah. Um, and she did a lot of work. Like she was the one who's better at like cold emailing people and reaching out, which was definitely part of the success. Yeah. Which, dude, like that, <clears throat> that is. 
the I think that's one of the most successful things that creatives can do is it, it is like cold calling and cold emailing mm-hmm. even though it sucks and nobody wants to do it but it's effective like yeah. businesses still do it because it's effective mm-hmm. you know you have to send a shit ton of emails yeah but yeah it helps i also learned that um if you're running a crowdfunding campaign if anybody listens to this don't worry about not raising money on the weekends i i thought I didn't do any research, but I thought that like the weekends would be not, if not like get more money would be just like normal. Like I didn't, I guess people have free time, but I guess it's like people aren't paying attention because they have free time. Yeah. Uh, and so like the first weekend I was like so stressed because we didn't make like any money. And I was like, Oh no, this is going to not work. Yeah. And then I like, Oh, I just kind of realized <laughs> that that was how it was going to go. And the second weekend I was like chill about it. It almost felt like I had the two days off sure. to not worry about it. Yeah. Um, I think I may have still post it just to do my due diligence, but I wasn't like as stressed. Yeah. Now there's the one, not the downside, but it's hard to get motivated in this way too. Is there's still some like um, perks I need to fulfill that I'm yeah. dragging my feet because yeah. I'm like yeah. I'm more like worried about like making the film. You know, I get, get it done and then do yeah. that stuff later. Do you, Do you have a plan of how you're gonna, or do you know when you're gonna release it? Because I'm guessing this is probably gonna come out January. February. Oh, no. No? Oh, no. I mean... Too soon? Yeah, too soon. I, I'm sorry. I mean, this podcast is going to come Oh, out. this yeah, yeah, podcast. It's like my film. No. <laughs> um, no, I don't. I felt like... I feel like now I'm at this point where I've been working on it for a couple months, and I... Uh, I'm like about to sit down with some of the producers and watch it and try to like think... like. I feel like I was kind of on a high like a couple weeks ago, maybe. Mm-hmm. I'm like, ah, oh, it's gonna be done by like this time probably, and then I'm gonna make something else. And now I'm like, it just chill and like give mm-hmm. this thing your full attention. So um, that's where I'm at now. So I'm not sure. I'm I'm working on it actively to try to make sure it doesn't drag. Um, so like, if things were to go well, I would like part of my hope is to get it done. So that I could play at like the indie film fest or one of the film fests in town, which would be showing at like in like May or mm-hmm. July. Um, but we'll see. Maybe it needs more time, and then I miss that, and it won't be till next year. Um, and then like I don't know when it will be out. If we're trying to do festivals and stuff too, that's kind of the hard part. Yeah. Um, so it just depends on when we get it done. What are the which festivals are like the ones that like if you could get in? Those are like the ones. Yeah, I'm trying to like. And maybe more on like your level, because mm-hmm. no, like obviously there's like, is it Canes? Cans or Cans? Whatever, fuck it, those pretentious people or like, I don't know it's like Toronto is like a big film fest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like, th- there's the big ones, but mm-hmm. what are like maybe like the B level that's like okay, this is like the stepping stone to get to there. Yeah, I mean, there's still some I'm sure I, I'm not like as aware of. Because like, you said like the Austin Film Fest was kind of like a Austin was a good one. It's not like uh, I mean it was good. I don't think it's like it would be one where most filmmakers would mm. tr- die to go. Um, I think like there's one in Maryland it's called the Maryland Film Festival, which I'd like to eventually get into. Um, that's just one I've heard a lot of other filmmakers like talk yeah. about. Um, I mean, obviously Sundance is like the big one, but that just seems kind of stupid because it's basically just feels like you have to have like a some kind of Hollywood actor yeah. and like a low budget to get in nowadays. Um, slam dance would be one that'd be cool to get into just slam like, dance? which is like the Sundance like, is that like counter the- program, uh, which I, uh, Paco got rejected from today, Nice. which I didn't think we'd get in, but I was kind of glad to get that one. Just like, okay, cool. Now I know. Slam dance just sounds like the urban Sundance. Well, yeah, it's kind of just like the, and I don't want to say anti, I don't, but it's more of just like, it's, I think it's more trying to lean into that, like really independent side, yeah, like yeah. counter programming. That's where, um, like Christopher Nolan got his kind of first. Gotcha. That's where he um, got offered to direct Batman. Yeah. No. Which I didn't realize that Batman Begins was like one of his early films. Mm-hmm. Like, cause he did, I mean, he had, he had, he did a short film that he did insomnia. He did, he did uh, and following Men- was like yes, a, following, following was that one, and it's then following I think was the one that played that at was Slam his Dance. first film, right? Yeah, and then he did then Memento, then Memento, then an Insomnia, and then it was like Batman, then Begins, Batman, yeah, which is fucking crazy that like well his third film also he's working with 
Pacino and Robin Williams. Sure, yeah. absolutely. Uh-huh. But when – because I, th- I, I remember I was listening. It. Wasn't it the studio approached him to direct it? Um, I don't know, but but probably I, I don't thought it was something whole... like that, and I'm just like, that's absolutely well. But the, crazy. the crazier thing happens nowadays is like you direct like one movie, and then they're like, well, here's a hundred, like a two hundred million dollar, or like, like uh, what's his face, um, Takawa TT. Mm-hmm. Um, well, he's made a lot of movies. He's done a lot, but I don't. He's never done anything as big as Thor when he got when Thor. he did because he. I mean, he did like uh, I mean, he did a lot of the Flight of the Concord stuff. He's done a lot of. More like comedy. Uh, what's the something yeah. in the shadows? He or? did uh, what we do in the shadows. Yes. Hunt for the wilder people. Yes. Um, a film called Boy, which I haven't seen. So he's done like like more like I guess like independent comedy films. Yeah. And then all of a sudden he did like then like Thor. Yeah. Well, he did a short too. Uh, is it called Two Cars? Uh, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna I'm gonna get the name wrong, uh, but he did one that got nominated for the, the uh, Academy Award, like a short film yeah. back in the day. Yeah, but yeah, it, that which it's just so crazy to me that you can be a small time director, then all of a sudden they're like, "Hey, yeah, we're gonna give you a few hundred million dollars to direct this huge film." And you're like, oh, "Okay, uh huh." D- just the balls to do like, yeah, I, I, if someone's just like, "Hey, Zach, we're gonna give you a hundred million dollars to direct the next Marvel film," would you be like, "Okay, no, I like mean, I wouldn't do it." That would be terrifying. Yeah, you know. I would also be bad at that job. Yeah, because you're like these movies suck. <laughs> yeah, but I remember. So I remember when you were talking to. I think it was at the Austin Film Fest. Um, you did. Did you do like a panel or something? Uh, I went to panels. I mean, we did a Q and A after our our, yeah. sc- our screening. But you like you were sitting there and everyone's like looking cool with their hats and it's like, "Where are you <laughs> from?" And they're like, "Brooklyn." And like, "Yo, where are you from?" Brooklyn. Where are you from? L.A. Where are you from, sir? You're like Indiana. Uh huh. But I mean, yeah, people. Just, people you like drop the mic. You're like. People weren't right. as cocky as that. They're all very, no, very they kind were. and humble. They were. I like, I like that picture better. But yeah, like a lot of them were from like you know the more typical cities. Um, there may have been a. a I think there was a Tex- Texas crowd or Texas group there because we were in Texas too. Um, but yeah, but it felt people were surprised when I said Indianapolis. Like Dude, was, was there like a? <gasps> Yeah, people clutch their people clutch their pearls. Indianapolis, <gasps> yeah, gasp. Yeah. No, but they're like, oh, interesting. And then people I talked to afterwards, like, oh, is there like a film scene in Indy? I was like, well, I mean, kind of. Yeah, but yeah. what the fuck film scene? Yeah, you know? uh-huh. yeah. Do you think you need to be in a big city to have a c- film career? Um, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm seeing if that's possible. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I feel like it's. I'm sure some ways it's helpful. I feel like it just all depends on yeah. who you know and your situation and blah yeah. blah blah. Um, I I, w- I would say if I I think we are moving away from big cities. Yeah, like, like the internet is, is is creating that. But I would I my guess is that fi- the film industry is like is going to be the last frontier. It also of, just depends on what like. Like there is a there is a lot of talent here in Indy, mm-hmm. um, a lot of people who work uh, here as well. I think like the big, I mean the big business part of it, I think is always going to be in New York and L.A. and then some other cities. But it's like that's where I think the business will kind of always be. Yeah. So it just kind of depends on like what your version of like making it is. You know, like I like it's hard to make money just from movies. Well, how do you define making it? I think it's for me like right now it's like being able to, I mean, there's more success that I would like, you know, I'd like to get some other festivals and be able to make things of like a certain budget range. But I think for me right now, it's like if I'm able just to consistently make stuff, then for me, I think that's what I'm trying to be okay with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I say that now. I'm sure there's gonna be a dark moment where I'm like, I didn't get to this, you know, (laughs) but I think my, in my most even kill I'm like, Okay, like just getting to like make stuff. Um, I think make stuff that's seen in some way, shape, or form. Like nobody wants to like, you know, just be in a void and shouting in the yeah. void. But um, I think for me, it's like if I can help along with uh, all the other people who are making great work too in indie. It's like if I can help make indie more established in that way, then I would feel accomplished. What at this do you, point. What, what does it take to make a great film city? 
Um, this wasn't in the pre-approved question. This wasn't. I didn't. I didn't practice this. Yeah, I did don't you know. look at the questions that I sent you? I did, but then we pushed I don't, it. I don't we pushed it. Remember. I don't remember what we're talking. Uh, yeah. We're talk about. Um, I think like. Well, I mean, it just depends. I feel like there's part of it. It'd be nice if there was more of there was more money that we had access to mm -hmm. in the city if um if there was like more support that way um but the community itself is uh, extremely supportive and everybody's willing to like pitch in uh, and help out which is not something to take for granted and then and like right now i think we were, we're growing definitely mm -hmm. i think like for me and I don't know what it would look like, but I think, yeah, if, if there was some more financial help um, or something like that to help people make stuff. I think right now we're getting, like, especially CanCan -Can is huge of, like, getting a place to, like, show your work and for the community to... I think part of it, what we need right now, too, is for the community to realize that we're here, which maybe they do, yeah. but I, I think it's, like, trying to grow. Um, I mean, everybody knows that there's, like, a, a pretty good film scene or music scene in Indianapolis and, like, trying to, I think... Make, I don't think so. I feel like people in town. I mean, maybe, I, maybe just because I live yeah, downtown. Yeah, but I think a lot of it, yeah, it's like uh, we're still, like, young. So, like, we're more aware of what's happening. Yeah. But it's 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 growing. I think it's... it's I guess it's like a, you could say the same thing about, yeah, it's all a few, art. It's a few years probably ahead ahead of the film scene. Yeah. Um, but but it, it's just weird, man. Like, if it rains outside, yeah. all of a sudden people are just like, I can't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. Like, how many shows... Or events where it's just started raining and people are like, I, I just can't. It's raining. I just, I can't. Yeah. It's insane. It, does, it makes no fucking sense. Uh -huh. But people, I'm just like, you you know all the events in Indy are inside, right? Right. All the time. Yeah. And, if, and if it's outside, be... there's always a contingency for it to be indoors. Mm -hmm. But people are like, it's just, I can't. I, I just can't. Yeah. It's insane. See, right now I feel bad because I was never like, great about just going to like local shows but i feel like i was more aware of what's happening but mm -hmm. since covid i'm still so unaware yeah like i, I ran it um just i go to caffeine often and, and talk to some of the baristas there one of the guys was like oh like this morning was like oh how is like how's your weekend going like did you do anything last night i was like oh no i just got pizza and, like stayed in and he's like oh i went to the show i was like oh yeah, I suck. <laughs> and it's like well, a no, it's public is... universal friend who I know and I'm a fan of. I was like, I didn't know they're having a show. Like, I just suck. it's yeah. Well, it's it's um, I like as an extrovert, like I I have the COVID funk. Yeah, of just too. like you, I got comfortable like just eating pizza and like living in my sweatpants. Well, it's hard to like me and my girlfriend are dating just a couple months before COVID, <clears throat> um, and really like those were kind of like the early months of dating. And so it's like what became like our like go-to stuff because there was nowhere to go was like ordering food. Yeah. And so like it's hard to get out of that because it is comfortable. Sure. I'm trying to push myself, but it's so slow. Um, yeah. I, I definitely have the COVID funk and it sucks. Yeah. 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 It's like, it sucks, but it's also kind of like, it's kind of nice. Cause yeah. like, I go do something. I'm like, Oh, I just download a rocket league. I might like, give that a shot. Yeah. But um, yeah. No, I, I I'm optimistic about India as just like an an art city. I think the more the more jobs that are created here, I think it's just inevitable that. Well, I think jobs bring people to cities, and I think culture and arts like keep people in yeah. cities and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So overall, I'm an optimist. Um, yeah, I I think like one, like one thing I'm trying to do right now. This I don't know. This is this is kind of a non sequitur to a degree, but it fits the bigger theme. It's like I, I look. I feel like the past couple of years I've been more. I've been really interested in how like musicians work, but just in like, I feel like with film because there is such like a business side. That I feel like some people. I don't know. I'm trying to think of the right words to say it. I feel like because we're we're so used to like making things i feel like you, you can you can be in this like mindset of it has to be like it has to look a certain way it has to feel a certain way like you have to mm -hmm. use a certain camera blah 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 it has to feel like this really clean product and i'm more liking and i'm sure i'm romanticizing it but i'm more liking the idea of like like you know like people can just go and like create a song i'm not saying it's easy but like you can like make a song <laughs> release it make yeah. another one and i feel like for me that's kind of how I'm, i want to keep seeing film as just like is to just keep making it as like a form of self-expression mm -hmm. 
and then if it can go anywhere from there, that's great. But like, not worry about um, it being like the final product, like the means to an end. Because like, I feel like there's like this whole like myth of people talking about like first films, like oh, if you're gonna make a feature, it's gotta like be like you're like I'm, I've arrived and yeah, like yeah. you ride that wave for years. And I'm like, that's most of the time it's bullshit. Because like yeah. a lot of films that people are like, oh, this, this is this filmmaker's first film. It's like actually, usually it's not. And they like the other film was smaller and they just don't know about sure. it or they forgot, you know? And it's like, I feel like there are people who do pop off in that way. And we talk about it a lot because it's sexier, but it's not mm -hmm. normal. And so like, I look at people's careers who like made just a bunch of stuff before they were known <laughs> in some way. And I think yeah. that's what I'm interested in. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm curious too, just, just because of the internet. I mean, it's changed. So we used to either have television, there was TV shows, news, cooking shows, and then we had films and movies and people go to the theater. But now with YouTube, mm -hmm. it just opened up a whole new, like, uh, are you, a, do you know Mr. Beast? No, is, I'm terrible with YouTube. Um, he's, um, he's the biggest YouTuber. I'm an old man with YouTube. Right now, that's fine. But I watch so he, channel five. You, <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. YouTube's, um, um, he recreated squid game. Have you seen that pop up? Oh, I saw someone posting about that. It seems stupid. What do you do? I mean, he recreated the games from squid game. Because there's somebody who I think maybe I'm mixing them up, so I'll shut up and let you talk. No, it's fine. But um, he he spent three and a half million dollars, and he I mean he's massive. He's got like eighty thousand subscribers, uh -huh. 80, eighty million sorry subscribers on YouTube, and he's it's insane. But he, I think this will be his biggest video. I think the last time I checked, it was at a hundred and like forty million um, views. Um, but that that's like content today. Uh -huh. So I'm just I'm curious if will film adapt to current culture, maybe make it more bite sized or something like instead of thinking of more like long story, uh -huh. more like epi epi episodic. Well, I mean, I think like y yes and no. I mean, like I think one. I think I think even, and I mean, you would know more than me, but I feel like even like. YouTube videos, I mean, used to be like, make them short, make them short, make them short. Yeah. And now I feel like people are like into like more long form stuff, sure. um, which obviously film has always been a part of that. Um, and they eat podcasting and stuff. Like I feel like there's certain things where now people are wanting it longer. Um, I mean, Joe everybody's Robin's different. podcast, dude, like some of his podcasts are like five hours. I'm not long. into that, but that's insane. But people, they listen to the whole thing. Yeah. But I think also it's like <clears throat> there are spaces, I think more spaces coming up for like short films and stuff. Um, like there's this website that I love. They haven't accepted my work yet one day, but they're called No Budge. Um, and it's just this dude who is a filmmaker oh, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he created that and it's become like pretty big or at least within its like like little niche in the past couple of years. And now there's like there's apps on like like on like Roku and like your yeah. Amazon Fire Stick and stuff that you can like download. You can watch like those short films or like their features they have on there. Um, I'm forgetting the name of this one because I just found out about it, but this other filmmaker who I follow, um, who's really good. She just posted about, the, they just like created this like website that you can submit your short film to and, and you can get money and stuff. So like there's, um, there are avenues, but like, I don't know, like, I guess like when we say like adapt, I think it's kind of already there. I mean, there's films that are yeah. short, there's films mm -hmm. that are longer. Um, I think it's more, I think everyone's just trying to find like, where do you, where do you put everything? Like where's yeah. the right place? Cause I think it all exists. It's just like, <clears throat> everything's becoming, its own little like niche even more yeah. maybe and i think yeah no i and i th i think the theme because I, I i i i'd like to say i'm pretty in tune with like the in the internet world of, of youtube and and i'm still trying to understand tiktok but like, I'm, I'm definitely like not that's just, like i I'm, get don't get on it if you can avoid it it's it's my a girlfriend time, shows me her favorite ones and it is it. a time suck i'll just like oh i got a couple couple minutes to kill and i'll and then Two hours later, I'm like, oh, shit, I got to, you know. But I think it's what, because we're so bifurcated, and I keep saying bifurcated, and I don't fully know what that word means. but it Just keep right. saying it with confidence. Uh, well, bifurcated, it's, it's it, I think it's separation in, like, something like that. Someone can fact check me. But we're becoming where it used to just be movie theaters, and, mm -hmm. t like, there's so many different ways to consume content. And it will constantly change, and more mediums will will come out. But I think, and this is going to sound so simple, but as 
what if it's good, like good prevails over any medium, like any famous Hopefully, person. Sometimes, sure. Well, I mean, yes. Well, I Not guess, all I good things, but yeah. So like, yes, but like, I, I I don't know. Maybe I'm just I don't know. Maybe that's just the optimist in me who's just like. Oh yeah, good prevails, but in reality, it's just like, eh, I've seen a lot. There's of always shit. like a pin- It's I, a lot of marketing. It's I feel like, like there's always like a pendulum, though, right? Like I feel like there's like times where like you have your massive like media conglomerates and yeah. we're like controlling everything, and then maybe it swings back into more like uh, interesting art. You know, yeah. like that's like happened with film and in that's the seventies, and but then it swings back, and who knows? And that's why I, I like talking to people like you and people who are interested in make making things that they want to make. But also, like, that will last. Like, I'm interested in writing songs that will last. Yeah. I don't know if they will. Right. But I am not interested in doing something that will go viral. Mm-hmm. I have, I don't have any interest in that yeah. whatsoever. And I think most of the content that we have today is people trying to go viral. Yeah. And I just, I think that's a plan. That's not, that's, you're trying to create a moment. You're not, that's Uh not longevity. Yeah. Longevity is sticking to your guns, being open to feedback and to like paying attention to the trends and stuff like that. But Mm -hmm. you're trying, like, I'm trying to write songs that matter to me. Uh, Like the more I I get on Spotify every Friday Mm -hmm. and I listen to what's new. Yeah. All sounds the fucking same. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing too. It's like, I mean, I feel like, if we're honest, I mean, there's always been, I mean, obviously there's so much more stuff now than ever before, but like, there's always been the stuff where people like release things. And then if you look at a whole career, it's like maybe one or two stick, maybe, mm-hmm. you know, like authors, filmmakers, yeah. musicians. So it's like, that's always existed, but now there's just like way more noise. And I think maybe now more than ever, people are okay with just making mm-hmm. stuff that like just exists for like today yeah, because it pays. Yeah. But it's interesting. Like I was talking to a buddy, um, we were talking about this band, um, and there was just something about the band that was just like, I don't, something's, it's not, it doesn't grab me. Mm-hmm. It's good. It sounds good, yeah. every, you know, but it just doesn't grab me. And I kind of, I couldn't figure it out. And I still haven't figured it out, but I, I think a lot of people are just trying to make noise. Mm-hmm. And I think this goes into the, creating something that's just cool in the moment as opposed to something like that's longevity. So it's like, yeah, like red notice. Did you watch red notice? Not yet. No, like it's maybe when I'm sick one day, I'll watch it. It's like, it's, it's noise. Yeah. It's entertaining, Mm -hmm. but it's just noise. No, but you're not trying to make a statement. You're just trying to entertain people. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'm just, I, I don't know why I started I've, going off on that. Do you know what I'm kind of talking about? Well, yes. I started going somewhere and then I I for, I just I forgot where I was going and then. Yeah, help, I mean, I feel me. like there's definitely stuff that people are making now that's just. Well, I mean, I think it's just content, right? Mm-hmm. For content's sake, I, but I think on the other side of that too, it's like you. I feel like you also starting out have to just make noise. Yes. But that also, I mean, that that's different for everybody. But like, I know that like. I am still learning so much and I know that the way I learn the most is just by like making noise is by making something Mm -hmm. and it probably won't, um, you know, it's probably like noise that won't like rise above the other noise, at least for now. But it's like, I think that like, that's kind of what you also have to do starting out is like making like your own noise and then just hoping that you get better and that you can make those, that those, uh, noises turn into like chords and make a song. Sure. I don't know. Well, I think too, is in the the world with YouTube, I mean, stuff exists on the internet forever. Yeah. Like that can be bad, but also like, I'm going to release this podcast. No one's going to listen to it. People are probably going to talk shit about me. They're like, Oh, Oh, another podcast. Like we need another one. It's like, that's fine. Yeah. But it's like the, I have a five year plan of hopefully in five years I have something. Mm-hmm. But over that five years, I release content that I believe in. I have conversations that I think matter and that I believe in. I write songs that I believe in that I think matter. I, you know, whatever I do, I think it's important. Mm-hmm. And hopefully, if something pops off, I have 
five years. I mean, that's how people make it today. Yeah. They have years of content out, and then one thing pops off, and then all of a sudden they have this huge catalog that people can consume. As opposed to back in the day, they would spend millions and millions of dollars just to get this one thing to pop off, and then they would have to keep recreating it over and over and over. And yeah. now it's just like, just put shit out there that you believe in, and then hopefully at some point some just like, yep, I'm into that, and then you they have so much to consume. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's interesting. I, I just saw um, there's a uh, documentary out right now about Kurt Vonnegut, and they're talking oh, about how yeah, like uh, um, about he you know wrote wrote a handful of books, and it wasn't until Slaughterhouse Five that he actually became like acclaimed and like well known. Yep. Uh, but then his other books that came out before that then got read because yep. like people were like oh this guy has other mm-hmm. books and so like um that's an old school example but yeah i think that's right it's like i think also like going back to like making just making noise because you have to like figure out how to make stuff it's like i feel like you never know what would draw someone's attention and what's gonna like yeah. pop off like, especially the film like you submit to places gets rejected but then one place accepts it and they really like it and you're like yeah. oh i don't you know you're like oh it's weird that that was the one and so like i just feel like you just have to make stuff and try and not prejudge it too much and just yeah. let it go out there and see yeah yeah for sure um lastly before i i think i, I think i want to i think this is how i'm going to do it and i need to stop talking about it but <laughs> i want to end the ep- podcast with you what for you because i think a lot of people in particular if they exist on the internet too much they are very saddened by what they see <laughs> or just like you know whatever yeah. but just for you like what gives you hope and this could be like a song or uh, a film that just may or just like an idea whatever it is it doesn't have to be like oh this treatise treatise yeah. treat treat treatise treat treat treatise whatever what so what gives what gives you hope cuz i want people to feel like i talk shit i say wild shit which is fun for me because I'm just having fun. Like, I don't hate anybody. I don't, you know, but like, I genuinely want people to feel hopeful. Yeah. And I think the more our world becomes more and more digital, uh-huh. we're going to become disconnected from what's really happening in the world. Yeah. Because if you talk to my dad, he's, <laughs> the world is going, going in the shitter. Yeah. You know, but it's just like the more I have conversations with people, even people I disagree with ideologically or principles, we're fine. We get along great. Uh-huh. But the more you exist on the internet, people are going to consume this on the internet. Mm-hmm. Like I just want I want people to feel hopeful. So what gives you hope? Oh yeah, uh, I feel like I don't know how to say hope for the world because that's something I'm still figuring out. Yeah. Uh, but I like at least like talking about like art and like maybe film in general. It's like the more I read about like film history, the more I realize like. It's kind of like every other history, right? Where like everything repeats itself, and it's the, yeah. it's the same. Like, like I watch interviews even from the '90s or earlier with like filmmakers, and they're like, "Oh, now film is getting so expensive, and it's only about like making these like bigger films and blah blah." It's like everyone's always had like the same problems and like the same fears, yeah. and they they do come to fruition. But like, there's always people who are going to keep making good stuff, and yeah. I think there's always going to be people out there who are going to find a way to to distribute it and get it out there. There's more noise. And it may get harder. Mm-hmm. There's always going to be like in your mind like a golden era that like it was probably always hard. And yeah. um, so I think it's like I don't know that doesn't maybe sound hopeful, but I think it's like just realizing that like it's easy to get down about like the state of an industry, and maybe for good reasons. But I think like that's always been the case. Yeah. Like I think you're just now living through it and realizing that. And so I think it's just about like to keep pushing through. I don't know. It's so weird to talk about hope, but there's a lot of bad things <laughs> happening in the world. Well, yeah, but but like. What's better to focus on the bad things or to like focus on something that gives you hope? Right. Like, and that's like, and I'm not trying to be like, I I'm optimistic about the world. Uh huh. Because if when you even when you look at the data, like since 1994, like the the murder, like people killing, I, th- I oh man, I can't remember the statistic exactly, but like people are killing each other less and less every single year. Yeah. Like, even, the, but because of the internet, mm-hmm. we think it's happening all the time. Yeah. But then I get stuck in the fact that there's still the same problem, which is kind of what I guess I was saying to a degree, but there's still, like, the same problems that we're trying to, like, figure out. Like, gun violence and, like, sure. women's rights and, like, racism. Yes, yeah. but I think it's, like, but it's it's hard to 
when our when our face is like when we're like so close to it, it's hard to see the hope. But yeah. when you pull back, when you take you know a few steps back and look at the the grand picture, it's just like, okay, we're moving in the right direction. Like for sure, gun violence like violence is a problem. Mm-hmm. Like people not being treated equally is a problem. But we're getting better as time goes on. I'd like us to get there quicker. Yeah. Um, but I think taking little dopamine hits of hope just that, that yeah. just make, cause like when I, when I, so there's a song every time I hear it, I feel hopeful. So, I mean, there's a few songs. So Star Spangled Banner, a, a, a Star Spangled Banger for sure. Um, niggas in Paris for sure. <laughs> uh, no, but, um, like there's a song called Marigold and Patchwork by one of my favorite bands called the Appleseed Cast. Mm-hmm. Just that intro, right when I hear that intro, I feel hopeful. Um, another song, it's uh, Come and Get Your Love by yeah. Redbone. When you hear that song, it makes you feel hopeful. Yeah. And I think the more we can get people to feel hopeful, the better the world I think will get. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I agree. It's like I I feel like I'm accidentally being a down. I feel like I'm most of the time I'm hopeful. I think it's just like right now there's so much going on that's like I feel like they're just overwhelmed. Like Yeah, well it's uh, our brain we're not primed. Well, our brains have not evolved to take yeah. on the world's problems. Yeah. Our brains are still in probably the early nineteen hundreds when mm-hmm. it's just like, what's going on with my family and my neighbor? Yeah. That was all our brains were but now it's just like Oh, uh, the the shooting in Michigan that and just happened. Omicron. Oh, the own yeah, whatever. Th- which sounds like a fucking transformer. Yeah. Like Mississippi abortion laws. It's just like yeah, all this stuff, and it, you're just like in repeat. But like I agree. I think like, I mean, as cheesy as it sounds, but like we're artist people. I feel like just seeing that thoughtful, or even just good things, even just fun things yeah. like that are still being created. I think that I think that gives me hope, and seeing people engaging and hopefully real conversation uh, yeah like there's there, there's definitely reasons to hope there's a lot of reasons to despair but i think like some of that's always been there sure and i, I just like my hope is that I, I just i hope that people they feel more hope than despair and yeah. i think particularly being in the united states you you should have that worldview because mm-hmm. even if your someone didn't use your pronouns correctly like yeah that's like i can see how that would affect you but you can still be hopeful because there's so many like you you have access to clean water mm-hmm. you know you have like s- like shit like that happening and i just my hope is just to make people feel more hopeful about everything yeah but i don't know who knows? We could all be fucked. I don't know. We probably are. We're uh-huh. going to die anyway. Yeah, that's, um, that's the silver lining. Is it? Yeah, the so day. we're all going to die. It doesn't matter. Uh-huh. Um, uh, where can people find you? Give them all the, the goods. Yeah, I am on Twitter. Most people aren't anymore, but I'm I'll, on. Dude, I love Twitter, I dude. Too. That's I'm my, all about Twitter. See, that's the thing. Like TikTok and all that stuff, it's like it just goes. Like People just post it to yeah. Twitter. So like, I don't have to go to that. It yeah. comes to me. Yeah. Um, so but Twitter at zach cooper so zach is spelled z-a-c and then cooper c-o-o-p-r um and then on instagram i'm the zach cooper is there another zach cooper no i think i just liked saying well oh, i mean gotcha. there probably is but um yeah. and then yeah those are the main places where i am active i also have a vimeo uh, under the same name and yeah you can usually find me at uh can can a few times a week recently and uh not eating the spicy wings anymore. Yeah, I know, man. Over that. Watch your balls. Yeah. Uh, thank you for listening, everybody. Um, that's it. That's all I got. Shout out to Rabble Coffee. Shout out to Rabble and the Can Can. Fix your damn lids, Rabble. Love you. All right. Be good, everyone.